Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Um, today I want to talk about uh, disappointing, disturbing fiction uh, and do my review of Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. So this is a book that I read as part of my Disturbing Books project where I'm reading books that have been recommended to me by viewers. Um, so books that they thought were, you know, disturbing and interesting and that I should read. Um, it's also a book that I wanted to read anyway because I've heard lots of good things about it from um, from people whose opinions are, are, I respect. Um, unfortunately, I didn't particularly enjoy it. So um, I don't, I'm going to try and make this not too much of a negative review, but it but it certainly wasn't as, as enjoyable or indeed as disturbing as I expected it to be. Um, but clearly that's my personal opinion and everyone's reaction to, to the book will be different but for, for me it just didn't quite hit the mark um so it came out in 1989 um and it feels very much of that time and i suspect if i'd read it in 1989 when i was 16 i would have thought it was one of the best books ever um so it's about a a family of circus performers where the mother and the father um deliberately try and have children offspring um who are deformed in some way so they can use them in the freak show so there's uh, like the main character the narrator um is very short um, and she's like that you know the least unusual of of the family um there's a another character who has like flippers for hands and things like that so there's there's all sorts of strangeness going on here and, and that central concept is is in itself quite disturbing um but i never felt like the book got more disturbing than that if you see what I mean if you can get over that that central idea of parents deliberately um like harming their children before they're even born basically in order to make money um which is a you know a hugely disturbing concept if you can get past that the rest of the book is is it's not that bad um so I did think it was quite interesting in its kind of commentary on um on like capitalist society and how you know how many how many people are just purely focused on making money and indeed have to be focused on making money in order to survive and how that can you know lead us as individuals to be thoughtless and, and cruel and, and to harm others um it's also got some interesting stuff to say about how society views outsiders so arturo who's one of the, the characters that the um the guy who's got flippers for hands becomes almost like a, a kind of cult leader as the, as the book progresses. And I won't say more than that for fear of spoiling it, but the way society, um, you know, often looks down on outsiders, but sometimes, you know, unexpectedly embraces them is definitely a theme of this book. Um, so I thought it was, I thought it was interesting in that respect. Um, the author it reminded me most of um, is an author called Nathaniel West, who wrote, I think in kind of the thirties, um, who published a few short books that are kind of quite weird and surreal, um, but all have interesting things to say. Um, and, you know, I think Geek Love falls into that, um, falls into that, um, you know, kind of category. Um, so Nathaniel West books were things like um, A Cool Million, um, which is about a guy trying to, trying to make money um, and gradually, like, like completely losing everything as as a result of that and i mean like literally everything um or miss lonely hearts which is about like a, a newspaper agony art so these quite surreal strange stories that kind of have el elements of everyday life in them um but also draw on you know the kind of weirdness and, and surrealness of, of of life and of you know the, the world if you like um but also, you know, have some kind of commentary behind them. So, so Geek Love definitely felt in that vein to me. But I think where it fell down to, for me was I just didn't connect with any of the characters at all. And and somebody in the comments had said to me that um, that people they knew hadn't liked the book because the characters were dislikable. Um, for me, it wasn't so much that they were dislikable because I don't I don't really mind that in a book. It's just I just didn't care about them at all. Um, and I think, you know, in, in the right author's hands, you can care about a character who is who is dislikable because, a, you know, a properly three dimensional character in a book will will have attributes that you can you can relate to, even if you think they're you know despicable overall. Um, but for me, that just didn't happen in in uh, in Geek Love. And I found myself doing the thing that I I sometimes do when I'm not enjoying a book, but want to finish it. Where you know I should I probably should have DNF this book, or at least put it aside to come back to at some point in the future. But with Geek Love, I found I wanted to finish it 
because so many people I know had, had recommended it. But I found that the more of it I read, the less engaged I was by it. And therefore, the less of it I was really taking in. And that becomes like a vicious circle, doesn't it? Where you get less and less value out of the book as, as you continue reading it. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a bit disappointing for me, but I do see why people like it. Um, and as I say, I think, you know, it came out in 1989. I think if I'd read it in 1989, I would have thought it was fantastic. It's definitely got that kind of late 80s, early 90s vibe of, you know, kind of in indie culture, alternative culture, um, that kind of thing. I remember seeing, um, you know, loads of music videos with with like carnivals and circuses and, and, and things like that around that time. So there's definitely there's definitely something from that era that is nicely captured in this book. Um, but yeah, overall for me, I'm afraid it, it just didn't quite work. Um, and I didn't find it disturbing either. So beyond that central concept, which is, as I said, you know, pretty horrific, it's kind of not, because because I didn't connect with the characters, I didn't feel their pain or their grief. Um, and so, you know, I really was not that disturbed by it. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. So today is um, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, which is a book that seems to divide people quite a lot. So I know quite a lot of people who absolutely hated it and thought it was ridiculous, and quite a lot of people who really loved it. I fall into the latter camp. I, th I thought this was a really entertaining thriller with an interesting concept, and it just gripped me right from the start and kept me, kept me reading. I think the reason why some people don't like it is it's quite science-y. Um, and I don't think people don't like it because because of the science or because it's you know it's difficult to understand or anything like that because I think Blake Crouch does a good job of making it accessible I think the people who I know who haven't liked it didn't like it because they thought the science was bad um, and I'm someone who when I'm reading books I tend not to look too deeply into them so if somebody says this scientific thing is true I'll be like fine yeah okay as long as it moves the story along I, I'm with you um, so I think that's why I enjoyed it and why I think perhaps some people don't i think it's one of those books where if you know too much about the science involved in it and it's about like multiverses and things like that from what i remember um if you know too much about that stuff you may not enjoy it because you'll realize that it's a, it's a load of hokum um, but for me it was a it was a fun ride so i hope you found that interesting do let me know if you've read geek love let me know what you thought of it your your opinion may well differ from mine um and i know loads of people out there like it um, and let me know also if you fall into that trap that i fall into of diminishing returns on a book that you're you're not really enjoying um but anyway as always thank you very much for watching hope you're safe and well out there hope you're reading good stuff and i'll speak to you again very soon cheerio